All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to True Footy. This time, Just the Tips brought to you on location. Drewzy, <laughs> you, uh, you didn't get much of a good night's sleep last night um, because of some football event that took place. But I want to know from you, what shattered harder? Conor McGregor's leg the other day or your heart when England lost to Italy last night? Probably Conor McGregor's leg because it snapped yeah. in half. Um, but yeah, no, nah, massive Conor McGregor fan. And uh, he couldn't get it done yesterday, unfortunately. And then I woke up to watch England play in the Euros final. Being half English, I've watched every game this tournament, followed the squad for a while, and um, just lost on penalties. So sports absolutely throw me through the ringer this week, and I'm not happy about it. Lost all my sleep, and uh, here we are, talking about football. But at least you're not one. I was going to say, at least one of the three footballing uh, results went your way this weekend with Fremantle having their biggest win of the season, which we will get into a little bit later. Of course, we can't record this video in the same room. Uh, I've also got to get to uh, an absolute blockbuster tonight. West Coast is taking <laughs> on North Melbourne in storm-like conditions on a Monday night. Uh, there's concerns that there may be actually capacity issues because so many people will be flocking to this game. <laughs> but let's get into the round that was uh, Druzy. We, we obviously have a game to go in round 17, I think it is. Um, but I can look at, I can tell people how the tipping is going so far this round. You are currently 96, which is hopefully going to become 97. I presume you tip West Coast to beat North in the end. Yeah, I did. Far out, I've slipped. Well, there was like four stinking upsets this round. This is one of the hardest rounds to tip correctly, <laughs> I think, ever. I literally um, said to you before the round, I was like, this round's so easy to tip, bro. I'm going to get eight. <laughs> Yeah, there was four oh. upsets in a row, uh, which is incredible. So um, I think you've got one more than me this round. Oh, it's because Melbourne was the away team and you forgot to tip that. Yeah, I forgot to tip. I think I I can say it in hindsight nice and easy, but I think I would have tipped Melbourne in the end just because I've had... Uh, you tipped Port in the video, so... Yeah, I, I did tip Port in the video, but um, yeah, I just didn't have faith in uh, Port getting that done just because they haven't been able to beat top eight sides and Melbourne needed a response from the week before. That was the one you got over me. Uh, I'm on 84 correct tips, 479th out of uh, just under 800 now. And Dad's also on 94, two behind you now because he's on three as well. Now, we can't obviously give you the whole updated um, scores of how everyone did this round. I will put them up on the screen now. So congrats to the people who are on the screen currently. I just can't read it out because I can't see it all yet because the round hasn't finished. Let's get into the video. All right, the first game of round 18 is uh, Fremantle versus Geelong, and this is likely Ooh. to be in pretty wet conditions. Perth is facing uh, probably one of the wetter weeks we've seen in, uh, well, in, in a few weeks. Obviously. Lots of precipitation, lots of over-gas clouds. It's just mm. a lot of rain, Jesse, you're right, but Fremantle is about to make it rain up in, this, up in this stadium, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know if it is raining on exactly. Thursday because I think like all the rain's coming out tonight. Apparently, it's meant to just be like a hectic storm front and then it clears up for a bit. But um, hey, I'm not a weatherman. Yeah, neither am I. Why, why are we talking about it so much? I don't know. You'll brought it up, buddy. This is your show. <laughs> well, I do think the result, of the weather will be relevant this weekend. Geelong are one of the best wet woody. <laughs> <laughs> Very good when they so, have a wet woody. Geelong are the best. One of the best wet. Uh, weather footy sides in the comp and hopefully they'll have a wet woody on Thursday night as they clap your cheeks but Fremantle coming off one of the uh, one of the best wins of their season probably certainly the biggest in terms of margin 62 points um, a lot of bright sparks for the, the Dockers as you would have seen when you live streamed on uh, on Saturday afternoon Fife was really good in game 200 um, and Sarong I thought in particular was let off the chain a little bit he's been tagging lately um, and they sort of let him into the midfield uh, good week to trade him in in fantasy which I did he had 30 possessions as well they're coming up against Geelong though who had a kind of run of the mill performance against the Cats uh, against the Blues rather on the MCG I thought Zach Tui was really good he had two goals and 24 possessions against his older side Drew's the last time Fremantle played Geelong was a game we went to together in mm -hmm. really wet conditions as well and you you guys kicked two goals 14 which I thought for nice second, oh is that Fremantle's lowest score ever uh, sorry it's two goals two four sixteen um, but uh, of course it wasn't you guys <laughs> kicked one goal seven against Adelaide <laughs> I remember that game that was disgusting yeah. uh, how do you guys how do you feel about this game the, the thing that's giving me faith here, Jesse, is Geelong haven't been the best team on the road. They lost to Adelaide, although they beat Port, but they lost in Adelaide to Adelaide. They lost to Brisbane in Brisbane, lost to Sydney in Sydney. First trip away to the West this season. And we, we're not too bad against Geelong, like, um, especially at home. I can't remember being pumped by Geelong at home. Um, so if the, the last game we went to. Well, yeah, but that, that, that was absolutely 
belting down rain. So yeah. that's that's sort of a write off. Yeah, if the conditions are fine, I think we can compete with Geelong. Geelong's a safe tip, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was an upset here. Freo last week, like if you just looked at the game from a statistical point of view, you'd say that Freo played well, but I don't think we got out of third gear the whole time. We had a lot of good performances, like good individual performances, but the, the mid to forward link up really wasn't there all game. So conservative tip would be the Cats. I really want to tip Freo because I believe we can do it. But uh, nah, the Cats are probably, I think they're the most informed side in the comp now that Brisbane lost last week because they've won eight out of their last 10. I'll tip the Cats, but I feel like I'm doing my boys dirty. I'll tip them to win by 15. Yeah, you guys definitely have uh, reason for optimism. I am also going to tip Geelong uh, by about four goals, although I do think if Fremantle do win this, it's probably their best win or most significant yeah. win since uh, 2015, although the bar for that is pretty low, Drizzy. Get out of it. The second game of the round is Richmond versus the Brisbane Lions at the MCG. And uh, I think we did a video in the summer, Drew's sort of looking at the 10 biggest blockbusters coming up in 2021. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think this would have made the list. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, two sides that have played in finals in recent years should be contending. Obviously, Richmond have won two flags in a row, but their season has been completely ruined almost by uh, Collingwood. I think they led by almost six goals at one point. Collingwood came back, pegged them back. Um, there are injuries happening at Tigerland for sure, but they're also looking a little bit listless. And to, to lose three games on the trot to uh, so Kilda, Collingwood and the Gold Coast Suns. And West Coast before that as well. Four, four losses in a row. That's true. Um, so that's four in a row against teams that they probably should be beating. You'd probably let them off for West Coast, but in, mm. when you add them all up together, it's, it's looking a little El Stanko uh, for Richmond. I think even the most optimistic Richmond fan uh, would say to say they're still in the finals hunt is probably a little bit generous. Coming up against the Lions, who, uh, again, are coming off a real big upset. St. Kilda turned it on uh, against them at Metricon Stadium. Yes, they did lose their home game as such. This should have been at the Gabba. But I don't think it would have mattered watching the game. I think St. Kilda uh, just brought that intensity and played really, really well. Jack Steele, I think he had 15 possessions and two goals in the last quarter. And uh, really, you know, tore Brisbane a new one. And uh, St. Kilda got the job done pretty easy. So it's actually been 12 years since the Lions have beaten the Tigers at this ground. Surely, if they're ever going to do it, this is the time, Drew. Yeah, if they're going to do it any week, it'll be this week. Richmond are really missing their rocks. Soldo and Nan Curvis mm. both out. And they've just got that young fella in there, but he's getting chopped up. And yeah, I think they've got a younger side than they've had over the last few years. And they just can't get it done. That that DNA strand of, of the Richmond Tigers, it's slowly breaking apart. Um, yeah, really disappointing to drop that game to Collingwood yesterday when they were in such a good position to win it. And Brisbane... Other than last week, I've been really, really good this season. Everyone knows that. Hipwood will be out. He's probably done an ACL, unfortunately. So that's going to throw a spatter into their season. Um, but yeah, I think Brisbane will get, get this one done, Jesse, away from home at the MCG. It'll be good for them to get a win on the MCG as well. Obviously, they're going to be in finals. So they're going to need to know how to play there. And what a better chance to, to kick a wounded Tigers side. Lions win the, the battle of the felines by 30 points. Yeah, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, even considering how good Brisbane are and, and Richmond have never really lifted beyond being kind of mediocre this year, I still would have tipped Richmond very, very confidently, but it speaks to how bad Richmond have been and uh, the fact that the Lions can come off a result like they did and mm. I've still got no doubt that Richmond are going to lose this game as well. Yeah. I'll be I'll be really disappointed in the Lions if they don't win, uh, considering, you know, they need to be taken seriously. They need to start winning games at the G. I agree, they'll win this by 25 points. The next game of the round is a particularly interesting one. We have the second Sydney derby of the year, GWS hosting Sydney at an undisclosed location at the time of recording this. I'm sure it'll be revealed um, sometime in the coming hours, (laughs) the the luck we have with uh, announcing games and stuff like that. But uh, let's just say it's in Victoria or Adelaide, doesn't really matter. We can assume it's gonna be a neutral venue. Uh, The Swans are pretty much one of the hottest teams right now uh, off their last two weeks. You looked at the result against West Coast um, and the, the narrative was, you know, Sydney were good, but West Coast were really, really poor. But to back that up and then beat, you know, at the time, possibly the premiership favorite on their home deck, um, albeit without Norton. Sydney are looking red hot and they're looking, they're genuine giant killer this year. They've beaten Richmond and West Coast, as we know, teams that are well, would have been in the final eight race, but they've also beaten uh, Geelong. Uh, they've beaten the Dogs now and they have also Brisbane. beaten Brisbane. Thank you. Yes. I have to look at my notes there. <laughs> but they haven't beaten Frio. That's true. They haven't beaten Frio. So yeah, the final <laughs> test is uh, not not beaten yet. Um, but no, Sydney are obviously just playing an amazing brand of football. They had they got smashed in the clearances and still won the game um, 
somewhat comfortably. So uh, they're absolutely one of the hot teams of the comp right now. And the Giants are the epitome of inconsistency um, in a year where every team around that mark is inconsistent. They are probably the number one for it. I think to, to beat the Demons at the MCG and then to lose to Gold Coast by a point, questions could be asked over their application at the moment because there's, there's no talent issue, but to... to swing and as hard as they are questions need to be asked why i think canelio could be back in for this game uh how do you see the derby going well you, you just don't know which gws side's going to show up it's like having a relationship with someone who's bipolar one week they're absolutely brilliant showing all the potential that we know they're capable of and then the next week they go into their show and lose against the gold coast i mean it just made no sense at all i watched the last quarter of this game and they just had nothing like they they just couldn't use the ball cleanly at all. They just kept pumping it long and hoping for the best. And yeah, it just looked really bad. I don't know what to make of GWS. Um, it's just really bad for their fans who have to go through the, the high highs and the very low lows this season, dropping points to the three bottom sides. I mean, S- Sydney look like they're going to be a, a real good side in the next few years. And they are this year. Who would have seen that coming? That fourth quarter against the Bulldogs, they just ran away with it. And they had a really good four-quarter effort against the be- one of the best sides in the comp. So last time they played, Sydney were right up there on the ladder because they had a hot start to the season and they lost. So there could be an upset here. GWS might have a mental edge. But I think Sydney are just, yeah, in really good form. They're a really good side, playing with a lot of confidence, four-quarter footy. I reckon they'll get it done, Jesse. I'll tip them to win by 29 points. For sure. GWS are capable of winning this game because of, uh, you know, how good they are on their day. But it's impossible to tip against Sydney, I reckon, at the moment with the form they're in. Uh, They're just about the form team to come. I agree they'll win this by 27 points. The next game of the round is the Gold Coast Suns hosting the Western Bulldogs. Uh, The Suns continue to fuck up the top eight race by beating teams like Richmond um, and then obviously the GWS Giants. Teams that maybe had themselves penciled in for seventh and eighth a few weeks ago. uh, And now that's kind of been flipped on its head with teams like Gold Coast (laughs) ruining uh, ruining seasons, it seems. They were criticized a few weeks ago. I think the young players are starting to click um, and it's good to see them sort of having a resurgence where in previous years we've talked about it um, they don't really come back up after a dip guys like Lukosius as well absolutely gun pie love watching him play they're coming up against the dogs who um, you know we're in good form up until coming up against the, the Sydney Swans at Marvel Stadium they had no Aaron Norton that could have been a fairly decent factor considering they won the clearances 46 to 26 and couldn't generate a winning score in fact they scored 60 points for the entire game. So that might have hurt. Um, He should come back in this week. I don't know if it was the difference, but nonetheless, um, you'd still think the Dogs, there's not enough concern there for them, for us to think that they'll probably lose this game. Uh, Unless, do you think the Gold Coast Suns are capable of an upset here? Nah, nah, nah. We're going to see the old Gold Coast side of of a few weeks ago. (laughs) No, but to be fair to them, I, I wrote them off. I was really harsh on them. But this is why I've been harsh on them because I thought they would have like the potential that they've shown in the last few weeks. You know what I mean? Like mm. all that potential was sort of starting to to, to click. But it's not going to happen against the Western Bulldogs. Uh, no. So I'm going to tip the Bulldogs to win comfortably by 40 points. Wow. Uh, big call. I think I think at Metricon that levels it a little bit, uh, even with Norton back. I'm definitely thinking the Bulldogs, but I reckon Gold Coast are a chance to make this a good game. I'll, I'll save the Dogs by 18. The next game of the round is Melbourne hosting the Hawthorne Footy Club at the MCG. And uh, we saw on Thursday night the Demons, after dropping three of their previous six, turned it on and probably played some of the best football in patches that I've seen from any team this year. In fact, I'm still convinced their best is the best, and uh, they're the, still the number one team to beat. We're given a little bit of a favour by the Dogs losing this week, and they've, they've earned a uh, top spot once again. But Petrarca was brilliant again. He was a player that we didn't even really mention in the Brownlow talks. Um, I don't know if he's had enough se- uh, you know, consistent games this season to pinch votes off Oliver and Gorn. I, that's pretty competitive. But he had three goals, 33 possessions. Pickett kicked three, McDonald kicked three. Uh, and it was just a, a great game for the Demons. And then you've got Hawthorne on the, uh, on the other side of uh, the ledger who came up against Fremantle. And um, look, Fremantle are a clearly better team. Um, I think that's fair to say. They've beaten them twice this year. But to go down by 62 points in Tasmania, where Hawthorne are generally pretty good, and, and I think you'd say that Fremantle haven't really played their best football in Tasmania, I thought they looked quite listless at times and maybe allowed Fremantle to play on their terms more than they would have liked. I think that's fair to say in a, in a 10-goal loss. So do you give Hawthorne any chance of beating the Demons here? No, not at all. Um, Hawthorne do compete well. They just like going forward. They are they're really bad. Like they, they generated mm. nothing going forward. Their yeah, mid forward connections just non existent at times. They compete, which is um as I said, like 
the 62 point margin didn't tell the the story of the game I didn't think they just couldn't convert their chances um, right. but they've pipped good sides this year I don't think they're, they're too stinky Hawthorne um, but yeah Melbourne's best performance off the year it was good to see the boys fire up again um, get back into form after that that loss to GWS and yeah Cozzy Pickett those two goals he kicked from 50 just off a step ball sails through Petrarca back to his best um, yeah I think Ben Brown coming back into the side even though he didn't kick any goals just freed up yeah Tom McDonald and yeah Petrarca and Cozzy to get off the chain which was good Melbourne are uh, in some good form again which is good and they're going to win this game. No mistake. They're going to win by 30 points. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you and go a little bit harder. I'm going to say Melbourne will win this by a good 44 points. The next game of the round is St. Kilda against Port Adelaide at Marvel Stadium. And Drews, this is shaping up to be one of the more interesting ones of the round. Uh, and bizarrely, it could be a little bit of a finals preview with the form that St. Kilda's in. They've won three on the bounce now. Uh, we didn't give them really much credit when they beat Richmond. The, the narrative was around Richmond. Uh, they had a semi-unconvincing win against uh, Collingwood where they won by nine points and people were still like, oh, I don't know. I've seen better from St. Kilda. But the performance they turned it on at Metricon uh, against the Brisbane Lions to beat a generally one of the better sides of the competition, uh, that's certainly gotten people sitting up and taking notice of them. And we, we talked about Jack Steele. He had 15 possessions and two goals in the last quarter. Uh, he was an absolute monster. So I, I think St. Kilda are a real chance to knock off Port Adelaide who are continuing their form against top eight sides where they can't buy a win, it seems. I saw a stat where Port Adelaide have actually beaten less top eight sides than the Adelaide Crows this year, mm. which... Uh, <laughs> which speaks volumes considering they've had, I think, three of those home against, you know, the Bulldogs, Geelong, and Melbourne as well. So, look, it was kind of a... It's it's harsh to mark Port too hardly because, you know, Melbourne are probably the best team in the comp at the moment. Um, but it really does... Uh, it is really a concern for them going to finals. And this is a team, St Kilda, who will realistically, at ninth spot, be playing every game like it's a final. So I think there's a real stinky chance of an upset here. How do you feel about it? No, nah, I reckon Port will get it done, hey. They, they don't lose this, like worse sides than them. And like just going off St Kilda's form this season, I mean, they've been diabolical. Obviously, mm. they, they are in good form now, but I'd have more faith in St Kilda shiting the bed this week than I would for them to back up with another very solid performance and beat a really strong Port Adelaide outfit. Um, is that fair to say, do you think? Uh, I think you're notoriously harsh on St Kilda. I can yeah. understand why you'd want to backport in, but uh, I think I think Saints deserve a little bit more credit. Yeah, that. no, they, they definitely do, but I think it's more likely that that they'll lose this game by a lot fair than enough. convincingly win. Um, <laughs> just, just, that's just based off the, the integrity that they've had this season. Um, mm. So yeah, I, I'm going to... Uh, Port play Marvel pretty well as well, so... Um, okay. I'll back Port to win this one. Could be close, though. I'll, I'll tip Port to win my 16. I am very 50-50 on this, and I'm inclined to maybe just differ with you on this one because I need to make up a tip somewhere. I'll make it interesting. I'll say St. Kilda is my upset of the round, and I'll, I'll go ahead and tip them. And that's why you're behind me, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Next game of the round is North Melbourne versus Essendon at Marvel Stadium. North Melbourne, of course, are playing tonight as we record this, so not too much to talk about there um, in terms of you know the previous week. Um, other than we can say that you know they're still bottom of the ladder, although they have definitely had an improved month of football. And the last time they took on the Bombers, it ended pretty ugly. I think it was 62 or 72 points uh, the Dons way, and that was also the tale of Essendon's game last week against Adelaide, restricting them to their lowest uh, ever score. Two goals, nine, 21. Archie Perkins probably going to get the Rising Star nom for three goals and 18 possessions. Uh, and Essendon looking like a side that believes that the top eight is on, and that's certainly true with the results uh, that are happening. Again, it's really hard to say because uh, your opinion might change if North put up a really good fight or even win tonight, but do you think they could beat Essendon? Yeah, I think they could. Um, I don't think they will. I think it could be a good clash because, yeah, North Melbourne have grown as the season's gone on. They've become a better side, more competitive each week. Um, it'll be telling how they go against West Coast, obviously. But I think they looked good against the Bulldogs. If they can play at that same level that they did against the Bulldogs, I think they can compete with Essendon. Um, yeah, I streamed the Essendon-Adelaide game on Friday night. and uh, It wasn't a really exciting game, but the, the clear bright spot was Archie Perkins. Kicked three goals. He could have had five or six if he... Uh, didn't shank his set shots, but yeah, he's going to be a, a star of the competition, young Archibald. So um, yeah, I, th I think the safe tips obviously Essendon. Uh, they've been in uh, good form in patches this season. So yeah, safe tip Essendon. I'll back them into win, 
But um, I'll be watching North with a close eye. I think this could be a good game to see where they're at against sides that are sort of on the fringe of the eight. I'll tip Essendon to win, though, by 23. I agree with uh, with all that. I can't possibly tip North here. Again, if they beat West Coast, I probably still wouldn't tip them in this game because <laughs> uh, of obviously where West Coast would be in that scenario. But, um, yeah, I'm going to say Essendon turn it on. It's worth noting they had 61 inside 50s to 31 against Adelaide. I think they play well against North, and uh, they'll win this game by 40 points. The next game of the round is traditional rivals Collingwood hosting Carlton at the MCG. Collingwood coming off a miraculous win where they trailed by nearly six goals against Richmond, came back and ruined their season. Um, and in particular, the senior players for Collingwood stood up. You had guys like Grundy, Adams, Crisp, Elliott, and Dugowie all really sensational. Dugowie is the one I'm sort of really noticing there because in his, his average is 18 possessions a game, but his last three weeks have had 32, 32, and 29. So he's getting a lot more of the footy. Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk about him being a permanent midfielder. And um, obviously, when he's getting more of the ball, Collingwood seemed to be a better side. You've got Carlton on the other side there who, uh, after a relatively good win against Fremantle uh, couldn't quite match it against Geelong and it's been a tale of their season uh, the fact that they can't really compete with the, the best sides but again how harsh do you mark against them for you know losing to a side like Geelong who are obviously very very good Sam Walsh was brilliant again I think he had 36 possessions two goals um, still you know keeping his name relevant in the All-Australian conversation this, this is a tough one to pick. Collingwood won the one earlier in this year. How do you see this game going? Yeah, this is one of the, the tougher games to tip this round. I was just looking at the form, and yeah, it's, it's hard to split these sides. First, uh, in the earlier rounds of the season, obviously, as you said, Collingwood won when they were looking like they were going to be good this season, but Colton competed. Colton against Geelong, they just got demoralized after their, their inaccuracy. I think like they, they were in it for in it to win it in the in the first quarter. Um, but yeah, just inaccuracy and then their ball use got sloppy going inside fifty against Collingwood. They're gonna be up for that. Uh, but I, I just don't know because Collingwood has sort of had a big win against Richmond, but Richmond is shy. This is this is a hard game to tip. Uh, who are you who are you leaning towards? I, I'd probably lean towards Carlton. I was gonna pick the opposite of whoever you picked. To be honest. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll back in the Blues. Um, yeah, okay. I was done. probably leaning towards Collingwood, to be honest, anyway. Okay. Um, so I'll take that. Not really with any conviction. Um, Collingwood won the one earlier, and I always look at head-to-head um, because I think that's relevant. So I'll back them in. Um, Collingwood by seven points. Oh, I sort of want to tip Collingwood, eh? Oh, well, too fucking bad. No, I'm going to tip Collingwood. <laughs> I'll tip Collingwood. I, I think it could be close, though. Um, and, yeah, that would help us out because we don't need Colton sniffing the eight either. I'll back Collingwood in. I think they're a better side. They just they just haven't been in the form this season. That's what makes it hard. But if Collingwood's best shows up, um, yeah, no, they can do really well. Taylor Adams was really good yesterday. I think their midfield can can contain Walsh. Could just zero out Colton. Mm, yeah, okay. I wouldn't advise you to piggyback on my footy tipping. Let's move <laughs> on to the final game. Uh, Adelaide versus West Coast at Adelaide Oval. I'm thinking of probably streaming this game. Because uh, I do like to stream the odd occasional West Coast away game. And uh, hopefully it's a better stream than the Sydney one. But Adelaide uh, obviously coming off a really, really bad loss. Uh, probably their worst of the season. The other one against GWS comes to mind. Another one we streamed. But um, they got absolutely pants. Like I said, 61 inside 50s to 31. And uh, it was really exposed for a lack of forward line with Tex Walker obviously missing the game with that ne- neck injury. I believe he's possibly back in for this game. Uh, as it stands, but to be fair to Adelaide, they haven't had too many uncompetitive games, um, so you, you can chalk that one up to being a young, inexperienced side, and you know, the forward line without them, guys like McAdam, Dilthorpe, um, it, it's pretty young and raw, so um, a lot of development to go, and for West Coast, you know, again, this game's being played tonight between uh, the Eagles and North Melbourne, so hard to read the form line on that, I'd like to think that we find a little bit of confidence, I don't really care about the margin tonight, but if they find confidence, uh, then, you know, it will allow them to maybe use that as a springboard into the final six, seven weeks of the season. Adelaide are not a great side. Um, so while they've been competitive, I'm inclined to think the Eagles should win this. But again, so many questions on the Eagles right now. Where's your head at? Yeah, no, nah, Eagles will get this done. You haven't lost at Adelaide Oval before, have you? Uh, we have, um, just yeah. not to Port, and I think to Adelaide once or twice. But generally, you're right, their record is very good. Yeah, their, their form sort of gone out the window off any form that they've had that, well, in the early season. But yeah, against Essendon, they just looked woeful. Uh, yeah, really missed Tex in that game. Dilk Thorpe got, got found out just because they really had no clear targets going forward. Um, and yeah, yeah, West Coast, 
at a, a stage in in their club where they're they're trying to prime for finals, even though they're, they're stinking it up at the moment. They can't drop games like these. I think you'll win it uh, pretty comfortably. I'll go West Coast by 28. Yeah, it's hard to not be a little bit biased because uh, I always still throughout you know the shit performances this year I've got a bit of blind faith and I think the Eagles are a better side They'll, <laughs> they hopefully will have confidence um, from beating North Melbourne tonight if we lose that then I'll change my tip but I'll say the Eagles win this by 14 <laughs> alright guys that comes to the end of this edition of Just the Tips let us know in the comments what you thought of our predictions and let us know some of your own as well as nominating an upset of the round I'm also curious how did you go last week because I reckon the four games in the middle there in a row uh, most people would have got all four wrong um, and then there was a 50-50 50 on Thursday night that split a lot of people um, but if you picked an upset let us know in the comments what you got if you want to know our thoughts on that incredible round that was do go to Drewsy's channel the link is in the description of this video and you can find the Drew Footy Show where we wrap the previous round every week um, so make sure you go there and subscribe thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video cheers